The state of Maine has its very own Fort Knox. Construction started in 1844, and it was built originally to fend off a possible British attack. It still stands today over the Penobscot River, an imposing granite fortress that never actually saw battle. For a while, it served as a Civil War garrison, and today it is a National Historic Landmark. While the fort does not store any gold, it may hide a ghost or two. I do believe, I've, I've seen too much at this point to not believe in something, and, and the strangest experience, when I got touched, I got two taps on the shoulder, turned around, and there was no one there, but I know for a fact that I got touched by something. Believers are so convinced the fort is haunted, they gather regularly for ghost tours and paranormal fairs. Some people have heard voices and heavy breathing, and paranormal investigators claim they've caught odd images on cameras. If you're brave enough, you can sign up for Ghost Camp and spend the entire night inside the fortress, waiting for who or what. My name is Amanda Curry, and I am a full-time uh, employee of the Friends of Fort Knox at Fort Knox. I got into ghost hunting because I'd had some experiences in my childhood. Growing up, I had seen spirits uh, in different places. We've seen a lot here. We've heard a lot here. One of the most common things that we get are footsteps on the floors, and they actually sound like uh, the soles of boots. Uh, on the wooden floors. We've also heard doors slamming that aren't there or they're chained to the walls. We've got some really great voices um, giving commands like 10 hot and uh, we have one voice that tells us to sit a lot. What do you want me to do? As an employee of the fort, I've had experiences during the day just doing regular uh, things in some of the alleyways, and I felt taps on my shoulder. Jamie. What? You just got touched. Who did? This guy here. And nobody moved, okay? Which one? This one. And I'm way over here. You? Did you get touched? Who got touched? He's freaking. You all set? You okay? So this is a EMF detector, a K2 meter. You see this on TV a lot. Uh, this is something that measures electromagnetic fields. And if this goes off in the fort, you know something's really around you because there's no electricity in the fort. One of the spirits that we get in this room is a little girl uh, named Elizabeth. She's looking for her mommy. Every time we ask her if she needs something, she says mommy, which is really sad. But we don't really know how she got here, or where she came from. That's what we're trying to figure out still a child spirit, she's actually got a lot of energy, as kids do, so when she's around, you know it. Thank you, that's very strong. One of the people we know for sure has to be here is Leopold. He died here um, after being the ordnance sergeant here for many years. He lived here all by himself, very lonely life, and he opened the fort and closed the fort every day, and right around the same time every day, you hear the doors, you hear the footsteps, and you smell his cherry pipe tobacco as well. We're gonna go up Two Step Alley, which is an area that Leopold would have walked every single day, so sometimes he might follow along. Leopold. This is also an area that you'll hear footsteps behind you, but you can see one end to the other, and there will be no one there. Oh, there's some. I don't know if you can see it. There it goes. And I'm not doing that. That's pretty strong. You gonna follow us? Sometimes you'll feel a cool breeze around it as well, and then the rest of the room will be warm. So that's a little, you know something's there if that's going on. Is the spirit of Ordnance Sergeant Leopold Hege still making his rounds as he did a century ago? Or does something else lurk in the dark passages? Something without a name or a face? And here's another terrifying ghost story. A lonely woman, a sea captain's ghost, a house called Brody's Watch. Every woman who has ever lived there has died there. Read my latest novel, The Shape of Night.